I don't know why I hadn't thought to say that. Okay. Let's be honest. Well, let's not be honest on this, because I told you this. We'll be honest in a second. Uh, let's pretend like we remember math and get ourselves a point here. We did a lot of function composition problems. We had psychic people. And I would totally give you a point if they weren't getting on my nerves. I totally would, because it is fogging off. I always called them fogging off problems. And so we always did FOG. So I'm going to change the H to a G. It's a variable. It doesn't matter, people. So since we like doing fog, that's fine. Change the H's to G's. No big deal. Fogging off. Not a problem. Okay, I'm actually, let's see. So it says I'm supposed to do F composed with G. Yeah, fa <laughs> or hoff. That would not be fun. That was funny. Okay, so F composed with G of X. No. Yeah. You're so sweet, baby. Okay, so we're doing F composed with G of 6. So I need to know what do I do with this 6? Do I take the 6 and plug him into the 2X squared? Do I take the 6 and plug him into the 5X plus 7? Where does the 6 go? Where does the 6 go? Oh, two points for Landon's group. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to, they asked for G of 6, we're supposed to actually find G at 6, meaning everywhere in G I see an X, I put 6. Okay, so in last period when they evaluated this, they got 144, is that the correct answer? What's the correct answer? Okay. Travis, you can have a point for your group. Uh, the good and the bad news about a semester exam is that it's a multiple choice test. That is good because you know the answer is on the paper. It's bad because all the obvious stuff is also on the paper. So the person last period, what she did was 2 times 6, that's 12. 12 squared is 144. She didn't follow the order of operations. Yet yeah, her answer would probably make the, the multiple choice answers. 72 also made the answer document. And, I mean, we did get 72, so I'm really tempted to put B, but that's not the answer. They didn't just ask for G of X. G of 6. They said F of G of 6. You're right, Travis, which is what Landon was saying as well. So I'm going to take that 72. So G of 6 was 72. So I don't need G of 6. And I know G of 6 is 72. So I actually want F at 72. Yes, and you can have a point for that. So it used to be 5x plus 7. Now it's 5 times 72 plus 7 because everywhere I used to have an x, I'm plugging in that 72. Remember we spent time, like if it said F at cupcake, everywhere you saw an x, you put cupcake. It is 367, so I bet some people will forget to add the 7. So if I were them, I would have 367 and 360. If we're being honest, those would be my four answer choices. Yes, that is the final answer, so it would be like 367, yes. Now, we have to do number three, same sort of thing. So I want f of g of x, but we don't have any numbers. It's still a fog, but I don't have any numbers. So I need to replace g of x. What is g of x? Thank you, and you can have a point for that. So everywhere in f, so f is 5x plus 7. Everywhere in X, F that I see an X, it used to be 5X plus 7, but now I'm replacing that X with the 2X squared. So it's 5 times 2X squared, which is 10X squared plus 7. Literally, someone almost said 17X squared first period trying to break my soul, I think. So let me go ahead and just go straight there. We did fogging off. I know semester camps stink because they're a cumulative thing, meaning all year or all semester. But sad day, that's how college is. And you know what? In college, it's normally worth a big freaking chunk of your grade. So I know it's a terrible thing, that, but you better get used to it. <laughs> I wish it got better. But it doesn't. But it doesn't. When it comes to semester exams, it doesn't. They just get worse, and suddenly they turn into, like, a big chunk of your grade. 
I know they make me nervous and I panic, so it's it's a good thing to have them. It's like going to the dentist. I hope eventually I get used to it. The way I hope eventually I don't hate going to the dentist. I really hate going to the dentist. Okay, we are going to do four and five as well. We're supposed to find the inverses of these functions, which is really easy. What letter am I supposed to replace f of x with? We always replace it with y, and I would totally give you a point, but you know they're chatting it on my nerves. So it's y equals square root of x plus 2. y equals 3x minus 2. We're going to just replace f of x with y. And then when we find the inverse, we have to first. I'm doing hand motions. Yeah, I'm doing hand motions. What are we swapping? Mm. Yeah, we're going to swap X and Y. So I'm going to let, who said swap? Was it you? You can have your point. They better be thankful for you. Uh, X equals square root of Y plus 2. I need to get Y by itself. How do I get rid of that square root symbol? Okay, let's square it. 2 gets a point. So X squared equals Y plus 2. So my final answer is X squared minus 2 equals Y. Your group can have a point. I got Y by itself, hot dog. If you can beat me, which seriously no class has been able to, which is stupid because I haven't done math for six weeks, but whatever. If you can beat me to the answer on number five, I'll give your group two points. Brandon, come on, get it, son. X. No. X equals, say what now? X equals Y. Well, Yay. Why you be on my nerves today? Why? <coughs> yes, but I win. I know. I don't care either. We'll work on it. We'll work on that. <laughs> Chill out. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. She's fine. Leave her alone. I got time for all this. Okay, why did I beat you to this answer? But but why? <laughs> that's what they keep saying, but I mean it's super easy. Because I switched X and Y. I don't know. I swapped X and Y and saw faster than you. That seems crazy. Y'all are faster than me normally at other things. Okay, are there any questions about this semester in the study guide? I need to see your notes from yesterday. Come here. I need to see your notes from yesterday. You're somewhat welcome. I asked you, well, we went back through some of the problems with sweaters to done with you, and then I asked you to do 1 through 5 and then 1 through 6 on the back, and I told you if you did any extra, it would be bonus. Everyone was on the same page with that, yeah? Yes, you didn't do it, though, did you? Okay. No, I appreciate your honesty. Okay, so if we're still being completely honest, we can move that test to Thursday. Yay, thank you, Ms. Colton. If we're still being completely honest, we can also change some things to try to make life a little easier. So, um... <laughs> Let's see. First thing to change. You see how this is just a 3? Make it a 3 over 1. You need fractions. I guess you were just supposed to know to do that, but, you know, it's May 1st. So it's 3 over 1. You need fractions. Fractions are your friends. Yes. I'm going to walk around and help you with 6 through 14 because I question whether or not you can do them. So I understand that we discussed they were bonus, but let's be honest, you have a test coming up and most of us haven't practiced this and need to practice this. And if you don't practice on your own, how are you ever going to solve? So I'm going to walk around and help you with this very shortly. So if you need help with any of these, you need to let me know then. I understand they were bonus, but bonus really like, psh, whatever. You need to try them probably. Thank you, ma'am. Garcia? Garcia? Yeah, she's not in here today. I mean, is she here today? She was in the first period. She went to the gym. She's, I haven't looked at my phone. Yeah, leave it here. I have her six. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Oh, okay. She, t she well, this is sad, but she texts me when she's going somewhere, so she probably texts me as I'm the phone. Um, teachers' aides. Well, not you. <laughs> not you ever. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to walk around and help you with these because I don't know that you know how to do them. Let's go to the study guide and talk about it for a second. I'm still going to post the key. You're still going to have class time tomorrow. In fact, I'm thinking about giving you this fun op optional assignment instead tomorrow. It's really up to I don't. You need to practice this. It's just how am I going to pull your teeth to make it happen? So do you want to do the boring old study guide and worksheet? Great. If not, there's going to be another option tomorrow. We'll make the other option bonus. But Lord Jesus, do something so you can practice. Practice somebody. Practice something. Okay. So, I know. Math is so hard. Let's change some things on the study guide. I want to change number three to say sign. I want to change number four to say cosine. Three and four on the study guide. I'm going to get rid of number 10. Why am I getting rid of number 10? And one gets a point. I don't like the decimals. We're just trying to practice a concept. So what 10's out. I'm also going to get rid of 11 and 12. Which is a sad day because if we don't do word problems, what's the point in doing math? But I understand we had not practiced those, so it can go too. Yes, ma'am. Number four of this. You need help with this. Oh, to instead of cosecant, it's cosine. Okay. I have my. I will about to go over why I just say that's that six kind of a point. Okay. Um. I don't know how. I was not here. I don't know what words she used. I don't know that you listened to those words. So, let's talk about number one. And then seriously, I'm going to let you practice all these things. But if you've not been taking notes or here on earth, like, today is the day, you got to do trick. Like, that was the whole point of Outer Pursuit Trick. Okay, so the six trig functions, what are they? There is Okay, so I'm just going to put sine, cosine, and tangent for now. Thank you for that. They were so in first period, and they were so sweet, but they were like caught. <laughs> there's SEC, there's CSC. <laughs> like cosecant, cotangent. Um, I saw in some people's notes that they said like all the thing like change all the x's to thetas or all the thetas to x. It doesn't matter. It's a variable. It doesn't matter. It's a variable. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's an x in the angle or a theta in the angle. It's still just a variable. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Do we know the hypotenuse of this triangle? How did you find that? Perfect. So you did 12 squared plus 16 squared equals x squared. You ended up getting 400 equals x squared. So you got 200 equals x. However, <laughs> Eric is smart, and I know I taught him in geometry. So I know my triples. That was a 3, 4, 5 multiple because I know 3 times 4 4 times 4, so this one was 5 times 4. So I knew it was 20 to begin with. Do you have to know that kind of heebie-jeebie stuff? No, I just do. 20, I didn't put 200. Why did I put that? Okay, so, and that's Caitlin's genius, and she can get a point for that. It would help. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse. This is opposite. This is adjacent. How do I decide opposite? I look of where theta is. The side furthest away from that theta is the side with the 16. So that's why the 16 is the opposite. So opposite over hypotenuse, which reduces to 4 fifths. Perfect. Thank you. Five, you can have your point. You said it forever ago. Yes, dear.
Uh, yes. Yeah, in my under my printer there's a thingy, and there's right out somewhere in the thingy. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 12 over 20, which reduces to 3 over 5. And then tangent theta is, yes, because it's opposite over adjacent, so it's 16 over 12, which reduces to 4 over 3. Yes, and that's what I want to talk about, is that the other ones are just the flip versions. So how I keep up with it is I don't do them in the order Miss Weathers did them in, because that's just not how I learned it. It's not, it's, you can do it however, if you understood what she did, keep rolling with it. I don't know how she explained it. I wasn't here. I just knew how I learned it. So it's sine, cosine, tangent. I learned cotangent, secant, cosecant. And I learned it. Well, I'm going to explain how I learned how, That's the thought. But uh, So the reason I put them in this order, it's not a bad thought. If you like it that way, that's fine. The reason I learned them in this order is because who goes with who? I know tangent goes with cotangent. When I say they go together, literally cotangent is the flip version of tangent. So if tangent was four-thirds, cotangent is three-fourths. Tangent, cotangent are easy to remember. Now, the others are also flip fractions. The reason I remember that cosine goes with secant is because I'm a big Bama football fan, and that looks like SEC, and then that almost looks like conference for me. It almost looks like CON. So I think SEC conference, I know that's weird. And so three-fifths flips is five-thirds. And last but not least, I know sine goes with cosecant, so four-fifths becomes five-fourths. So literally what Abby Grace was saying, if you know sine, cosine, and tangent, you already have all six because it's just the flip versions for the other. <laughs> so like four-fifths flipped is five-fourths. Three-fifths flipped is five-thirds. Four-thirds flipped is three-fourths. We're literally just flipping. Okay, that's one thing I know you were stuck on. Otherwise, my understanding was you just need practice. Does anyone practice and they're stuck on a problem and they need help with it? Okay, then I'm literally just going to give you time to work on things. If you're not being productive, you're one, you're ticking me off, and I ain't got time to be mad today. And then two, we're still eventually taking a test on this. I might move it to Thursday, but it's still.